women, just shifting topics a little bit. There's a lot of uh, conversation lately about a ketogenic diet or a meat only diet being less than optimal for thyroid health. And I wanted to get your opinion on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that's the case at all. <laughs> I really feel the opposite, uh, not only from my own N1, but also from what I've seen it working in practice for a decade. I, I have seen so many people reverse their thyroid condition on a ketogenic and also on a carnivore diet. Uh, so I would say if, if someone's having an issue, maybe they're not actually in ketosis or they're dealing with deficiencies. And there's five deficiencies that can prevent a thyroid from fully correcting. The thyroid really needs quite a bit of iodine. And that's difficult when we live in an, a time when we have bromide everywhere and chlorine and fluoride and other things things that can block the iodine receptors. We also need the fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, we need zinc. There's a number of things, selenium, that the, the thyroid really needs to function well. And so if someone goes into a diet and they're not addressing that, that could be an issue, of course. If a person is not addressing the autoimmune nature. So for a lot of for a lot of folks, I find they'll go on carnivore and they won't know if they're in ketosis or not. And that can be honestly disastrous. Sometimes all it takes is uh, switching the energy source. And then someone could have been on carnivore for two years and now they're feeling better. Sure. So that's something to address as well. But no, I, when I have thyroid cases, I always go ketogenic and I sometimes go carnivore. So it, yeah, I'm, I'm on the other side. Sure. What would you say is the, I mean, if you're measuring blood ketones, what would be that number for you? For thyroid, I would say 2.0 and above oh, waking okay. consistently every day for months. Wow. Okay. What I would look for. If it's a different condition like neuropathy, then I want more like a 4.0. Okay. Wow. And so anything under two, you would say that they are not in a ketogenic state? They technically are in a ketogenic state, but I don't see the same reversal of conditions oh. under a 2.0. So I like to get people above a two because then if they fluctuate throughout the day, we're still in therapeutic ketosis. Yes. And there's no question of the body bouncing back between uh, glucose burning and ketone burning. I found that to be very important to pick a team, whichever one you're on, it doesn't have to be forever, but <laughs> for now to pick a team, because so many people that are compromised with an illness, they simply do not have the capability to turn protein into an energy source, like a healthy person doing the carnivore diet, right? A weightlifter, no problem. They can do that. They don't have to worry. But many of the people that I work with, they're far too ill. Their body is not going to go through those loops. So yeah, I would, I would pick a team. No. And, and I'm fully on the same page as you. I think if you use protein as the energy source, when it's mostly a building block source, it becomes a lot harder for people to sustain and have energy. And then the other thing I see with a lot of these ketogenic and even the carnivore diet is that um, a lot of people under eat, right? So finally women get to lose weight because they're not hungry anymore. And so then they start under eating and they're just going by their hunger cues, but we don't really have hunger cues once we all of a sudden are in a ketogenic or low carb state. And so I think that's where my guess is where some of the hypothyroid symptoms are coming up, not because of the diet itself, but maybe not using the correct levers to heal. Have you seen that? Yeah. I have seen that. Uh, I've also seen uh, a general miseducation as to lab work on a ketogenic diet. It is different. So for instance, when a thyroid person or honestly, any of us are in ketosis, our T3 should be low. Yeah. <laughs> we don't need as much T3. <laughs> so if it was uh, at the normal rate for someone on a glucose burning diet, then something would actually be wrong. So doctors will see that lab work and say, oh, something's not right with your thyroid and people will run with that. And that's not actually the case. The TSH, those are different. Those should be the same, but T3 should be much lower on a ketogenic diet. So I also see that. And I, I do also see just a lack of uh, deep nutrition. You know, we, we have this issue with we're taking a population who has been on a very compromised diet and we've been really programmed to think like salads and eating light is healthy. So even if we do this for our health, there's still a bit of a cognitive block that goes on. And, uh, and very often I find that people are not consuming enough fat or not consuming enough protein. And 
we need those things for very essential functions. Like protein is so needed for your feel good chemicals. You just cannot make all of those good, delicious bliss chemicals unless you have enough protein. And we women tend to eat a lot less protein, <laughs> like a lot. And some of us, many of us come to this after trying like vegetarian, vegan diets, you name it, right? Many people have, have come to this by, by a survival mechanism. And so there can be a zinc deficiency going on, which makes you more opposed to protein. And so you're doing it for your health, but you're not really eating enough. So, so that can be an issue as well. Yeah. And, you know, I found the same thing with my thyroid and my T3 markers dropped while I was on a ketogenic diet. And some people said that I have hypothyroid and I should be telling people that to people. And, and it's interesting because during that whole time I was nursing my son till he was five, had my menses, like when, uh, later on in that time period and then consistently, and I felt better than ever. Right. I was no longer struggling from an eating disorder and, um, being plant-based. And so it's just, maybe if your symptoms are that you have low energy, then you can look into the T3, but if you feel fine, which I do, then it's not as much of a concern, but there's just, you know, a population of people that believe that if your marker is low of, of the T3, when you're on a ketogenic diet, that is another sign that this diet is not ideal because you're showing signs of hypothyroid. Right. And I think it takes it out of the context of traditional diets. I mean, one thing we can always do if we're confused by all the conflicting information, which is understandable, is say, has this ever existed in a traditional society and been done multi-generationally? If so, it's probably pretty safe, sure. right? And, and the ketogenic diet is one that fits all of those markers. So I, I so support people with thyroid conditions going by how they feel. Like, I remember when my thyroid was hyper, I knew how that felt. <laughs> and when it was hypo, I knew how that felt too. So, so you can really go by how you feel. And in the same vein, so many people have gone through the, especially women, but men too, have gone through that struggle of knowing for decades that their thyroid wasn't right, right? But no one listens to them because their lab work is correct. So I think, I think we need to take the lab work with a grain of salt as long as we feel good. I agree. I agree. And then this, um, and in the same vein, if we're not feeling well, then if we can use the lab work as one metric, but not the end all be all, which I think people do, especially with minerals. I don't think, like I always say to my clients that a lot of our blood work is just we want to always be in homeostasis. And so it's not going to show you if there's a true cellular deficiency, it'll just try to keep things in balance until there's illness. And so you don't want to heavily rely on your blood work for everything, because for everything, for, for example, with potassium, it's mostly in our cells. And just, right. if your potassium is always good on the blood work, it doesn't necessarily mean you're not deficient. Oh, not at all. And it doesn't say what your vasopressin hormone is doing, which regulates all of these. So it could be going up and down and up and down. And it just happens that when you had that snapshot of the blood draw, it was okay there. But no, it, it's very true, especially with vitamins and minerals. The serum doesn't tell us too much. You could have an enormous amount of potassium in your serum and a deficiency in yeah. the cell. <laughs> um, and I had a client recently like that because I recommended she take potassium based on some other tests other than the blood work. And she was like, but my blood work says I have high potassium. So um, yeah, it's, it's very interesting.